The next set of three panels are the same as the previous set in that only one is solvable, except now you have to separate three colors instead of just two. These are a lot trickier. The patterns used in the previous set to identify the unsolvable panels still work, like the checkerboard and the opposite corners method, but they're less common so you'll have to use other methods most of the time. By the way, if you want to mulligan these puzzles and get new ones, you'll want to solve the middle puzzle incorrectly to turn off all three screens. It's also worth noting that between runs, the location of the solvable panel is random, but when you solve incorrectly and get new puzzles within the same challenge run, the solvable panel will appear in the same spot. So if you've already identified the rightmost panel as being the solvable one, for example, and you shut these panels off, when you come back after resolving the previous puzzle, the rightmost panel will still be the solvable one. Anyway, one other unsolvable pattern to keep in mind is something like this. If you have all three colors within any 2x2 two two square in the grid, that's automatically unsolvable. The pattern itself is really rare, but it's an extension to the strategies I'm about to talk about, so definitely keep it in mind. A useful strategy you can use to identify unsolvable patterns is filling in the empty squares with possible colors. For example, if you find an empty square on a panel next to a green square, maybe you'll assume that you should group it with that green square. In other words, you're basically imagining that it's green. If you find an empty square and find that imagining all three colors one by one in that square creates an unsolvable 2x2 two two pattern every time, then that puzzle is impossible, despite that 2x2 two two pattern not explicitly being there. It's hard to explain, but here's an example. If I pick this empty square and pretend it's green, I'd get a bad 2x2 two two pattern here. If I try purple, I get a bad 2x2 two two pattern here. And if I try white, there's a bad pattern here. So this puzzle is definitely impossible. This is kind of a slow method given how many empty squares you'd have to go through, but there are some patterns that help you find useful empty squares to try this on. For example, if you see an empty square surrounded on three sides by all three different colors, you can automatically imagine the empty square is the middle color in the pattern. That's because filling in the empty square with either of the two outer colors gives you a bad 2x2 two two pattern. Once you've found a forced color for an empty square, you can sort of lock that in and use that to identify more empty squares. Long story short, pick an empty square surrounded by lots of different colors and see if you can narrow down the color that the empty square would need to be to make the puzzle solvable. If it can't be any, then congrats, you found an impossible puzzle. However, sometimes just because you've identified the impossible puzzles, that doesn't mean the possible puzzle is going to be easy to solve. There are lots of possibilities for solutions here. The green squares and purple squares may each be grouped together. You may have one color all grouped up but another separated. You may need to use a quarry style solution. And you may need to partition off one color by pinning it against the wall using another color's partition. Sort of like that yin-yang pattern in the last video, but it's harder to identify in this case. It can be a lot to keep in your head at one time, so this is another set that I'd say practice a lot, and intuition will eventually trump your need to actually go and point out these patterns to yourself.